This is the instructional video for part number five, wheel. I'm going to start a new file, standard IPT. Beginning my new sketch, I'm going to place it on the XY plane. Now when I do this part for the wheel, I need to be able to rely on this center line. So I'm going to go ahead and just draw a line arbitrarily up on the y-axis, and you can't really see it, but there is a line right here. If I hover over it, you can see it turns red. I'm going to use the fix constraint up here. This fix constraint is going to make sure that that line does not move. So if I come up here and select this out of the geometric constraints, and I select my line, you'll now see this lock button appear, and that means this is fixed. It will not move. And that's where I'm going to dimension off of for the wheel. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to draw a rectangle on the right side of that line. And for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and draw something that's on there that doesn't have any dimensions because I'm going to be dimensioning that rectangle off of this line. So this first part of this line is going to be the whole size of this wheel. And the diameter of that is 0.28. So I need the radius. So I'm going to click this line I drew and the left side of my rectangle. And I'm going to make that dimension 0.14. I'm then going to dimension from that same line to the right side of my rectangle, the furthest part of the wheel, which is one inch. Then I'm going to dimension the overall height of this rectangle. So I can click the bottom line to the top line. And I need to make that 0.25. Now I have the overall shape of my wheel. Can't really tell what it is yet, but this is the boundary box for the wheel. I need to now create a curved edge on this back part of the rectangle. To do that, I'm gonna click the line tool and I'm gonna use the line tool a little differently here. If I select and hold on this endpoint and I pretend to draw an arc, again, I'm still holding on the left mouse click, I can bring it all the way up to the top there. And the line tool now turns into a arc tool. So I can right click OK, and I now have a arc, the exact distance that I need. I'm then going to draw a set of vertical lines from the top of my rectangle to the bottom, making sure that they're perpendicular. And these lines are just placed randomly. I need to dimension the first one to this fixed line. So I click the fixed line to this vertical point. This needs to be 0.25. I need to now dimension that second vertical line I drew to that fixed point. And this line needs to be 0.75. Now I'm going to take a line tool again, and this time I'm going to draw a horizontal line. So I'm going to just draw a horizontal line from one end of those vertical lines I drew to the other. And I need to mention that vertical or horizontal line to this top horizontal line. And that distance needs to be 0.125. And you can see here that it's not going to allow me to change it because I did snap to the sensors of the line. But in case you didn't, that needs to be 0.125. Now I'm going to use my trim tool, and I'm going to trim away a couple lines here. I'm going to trim away this, so that I have this vacancy in my part. I'm going to trim away this bottom part, and this bottom part, and I'm going to right-click OK. I now have this section open right here, and what I need to do is I need to apply a fillet to these edges. And there's a typical fillet on these that's .0625. It's not a random number, that's a sixteenth in decimal form. So I'm going to come up to the top here and I'm going to fill it and I'm going to change my dimension first to 0 0.0625 and I'm going to grab the two lines that make up the vertex. So I'm going to click this line and this line and you can see that I now have a fillet here of 0 0.0625. It's just abbreviating it and I'm going to click this line and this line therefore creating that fillet and then again over here this line to this line creating that fillet and then 
lastly on the top here, creating this line and this line on that intersection. I can close this window out and you can see I now have a filleted edge here. I'm going to go ahead and finish my sketch and I'm going to revolve this. So I'm going to select my feature and you can see here I didn't get rid of this area so I'm going to make sure I click both of those profiles and then I'm going to click the axes. It's important that you come back to our fixed line that we first drew here and select that as your axis. And you'll see your wheel revolve around that center point. I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to begin drawing the extrusions that are going to make up the spoke. So I'm going to come up here to my top view and I'm going to rotate this so that the word top in my view cube is the correct orientation. So now you can see I rotated. You can't really tell that a wheel rotated, but here you can see that my top correctly says top. I'm going to start a sketch and I'm going to start it on this flat face right here. I am going to draw a line straight up from the center point of this wheel. I'm just going to draw this up. I'm going to extend it pretty far up here. And that is going to be my reference point, and I'm going to actually fix that line. So I'm going to click Fix, and I'm going to grab that line once again. Now you can see the little lock button appear. I'm going to use the circle tool, and I'm going to draw a set of two circles. So I'm going to click Circle in the center here so that it's concentric. And the first circle is, has a radius of 0.375, so I need to double that. So I'm going to type in 0.375. And on my keyboard, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut of Shift-8 which uses the asterisk symbol, and I'm going to times it by 2. It comes out to be 0 0.75. I'm going to go ahead and draw another one that's concentric. So I'll click the center of this wheel, and I'm going to draw up this wheel, or this circle, is going to be 0 0.625 times 2. So 0 0.625, shift 8 gives me the asterisk shortcut, and 2. And I now have two circles that are going to make up part of this sketch. I'm going to draw another line. This line, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here, and I'm going to take my line tool and I'm going to go from the center and I'm going to drag it out until it touches the second circle that I just drew right here. And I'm going to snap right to that. I need to dimension the angle that that line is set at. This angle that this line is set at is 15 degrees. So I'm going to dimension. I'm going to grab my fixed line to this line I just drew at an angle and that needs to be 15 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and draw one more line, and I'm going to go from the center until I reach that second circle once again, and I need to dimension that distance at 30 degrees. So I click dimension, click the second line to the third line, and that needs to be 30 degrees. I'm going to make one more line from the center out to that second circle, and this dimension is also 30 degrees from the previous line. I'm going to use the trim command here, and I'm going to just trim some areas. There's some lines on this. And if I click here and here, and then I'm going to click this side of the circle to this side of the circle, and then again here and here, and you'll see that it's left me with this part that I'm going to extrude. I'm going to go ahead and finish sketch, and I'm going to extrude. And I have two profiles, but I only want to select this one. And I'm going to do a distance of all, and I'm going to make sure that it's selected the direction two so that it's cutting, and I'm going to select OK. On this sketch right here, I'm going to, or on this view right here, I'm going to start a new sketch. And this time I'm going to go off to this edge right here. I'm going to start this sketch on this face, and I am going to place a point that is on the x-axis. So you notice here my y-axis should read out zero because I'm directly on the x-axis. So I'm going to click on that point, and I'm going to now dimension from the center point. So I'm going to click dimension, I'm going to click the center of my wheel to this point, and this distance is 0.7. Now, on that mark right there, I'm going to create a circle. So 
attaching myself to the center of that point, I get this little green dot, that means I'm in the center of that point that I just made, I need to make a, a diameter. This diameter that I'm going to make is a 0.25 inch circle. I'm going to grab to the center, and I'm going to make a 0.25 inch circle. I'm going to come up here to finish sketch, and I'm going to tilt my view just a little bit, so I'm going to grab the view cube here and angle myself to see this a little better, and I'm going to click extrude. It automatically selects this profile. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click distance to next. And now you'll notice here that it takes the shape around here, but it's extruding it. I don't want it to do that. I want it to be a solid extrusion, so I want it to go to that position and fill the void. And I'm going to select the top one in the column here. I'm going to select OK. And if I zoom out here, you can see part of the peg appearing. I'm going to start a sketch on top of that face. And I'm going to complete the rest of that peg at that 0.25 diameter. So I'm going to go ahead and project geometry. And I'm going to make a circle. And I'm going to make the circle concentric to the previous one. And I'm going to make that diameter also 0.25. I'm going to press Finish Sketch. I'm going to extrude it. And this distance is going to be a little math formula because I need to do the distance from the bottom to the top, but I've already done this portion of it. So the total distance is 0.375, but the distance that I just did was 0.125. So I'm going to type in as my distance 0.375 minus 0.125. Then I'm going to start a sketch on the top of that cylinder. I'm going to project geometry to allow me to get the center point, and I'm going to use my circle tool and I'm going to select in the center of that to make another concentric circle. And the diameter of this cylinder is 0.125. I'm going to finish sketch, and I am going to extrude it. And that goes up 0.125. So I can simply just backspace off of my formula and use 0.125. And then finally, I'm going to start a sketch again on that cylinder, and I'm going to project geometry. And I'm going to place a point in the center. And I'm going to finish sketch. And I'm going to use the hole command. So automatically going to pick up that hole right there. And I need to change a few of these dimensions. First, the distance that it's going to go down, if I click termination and distance, is going to be 0.25. So I'm going to change this top number to 0.25. I'm going to change the diameter, which is the second number, 2.0625 and select OK. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click my top view here and I'm going to circular pattern the rest of these extrusions. So I'm going to select here, which is circular pattern. I'm going to grab my feature, which if you can't grab it right here, you can see it over in the browser bar over here that if I come up, it was extrusion one, so I can select that. And I'm going to click rotational axes, and you want to select something that uses that center point. So if I lean my drawing back just a little bit, I'm going to select the inside of this wheel right here. And I want an occurrence of six, and I want it to go completely around, so I select OK. And that is the completion of part number five, the wheel.